the other thing your book does is expose how um, seafood gets to our table. And so your time in Thailand with the fishermen was an eye-opening experience for us as readers. Well, and it's also, you know, I zoom in on Thai seafood because I think, one, there's been a lot of reporting in, on Thai seafood so that it's possible to excavate out these human stories in a, in, in a way for a book. Um, but really, I came to think of Thai seafood as being a stand-in for a lot of commodities. The reality with many commodities is that the supply chains to get them at a consistent volume for world appetites are so big and so complicated that visibility straight through them is almost impossible. I don't want people to be like, horrified by Thailand and then think it's some exceptional product. And I came to believe that it was far more um, pervasive than exceptional. Um, but yeah, the story in Thailand is, is horrific. Uh, it's about a, a migrant worker who uh, essentially gets kidnapped during his journey to Thailand from Burma and is imprisoned on a boat that is among other things, collecting trash fish. As aquaculture has bloomed, the demand on cheap fish has also boomed, and uh, migrants uh, in Thailand have been increasingly, um, you know, caught up in that boom. And there's structural reasons for that. These fishing boats go out to sea for long periods of time. So they can be resupplied out at sea. Um, which allows them to just hold people out there indefinitely, which of course is a recipe for abuse. You know, whenever like these structural things exist, if you have a democratized field with lots and lots of smallholders, you might have 80% that are really good people and like treat people, you know, extremely decently. And then you have 20% who are like bastards and the bastards take advantage of it.